Bienvenue, mes amis. Ah, c'est bien de t'avoir. C'est un peu la nuit, tu vois. Et it, it's a little bit night here in France. Ah, uh, we at the Louvre. C'est le perspective académique. Et on est là pour la dernière fois en la journée. We are here for the last time. I, je veux emmener mes shoutcasters, Magical et Joshi. Une finale fois, mes amis. Comment ça va? Est-ce que ça... How are you doing? Oh. I love that I can see France? smaller uh, you in your glasses. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what time is it for you in France? C'est la nuit. Like... It's the night. Come on, my friend. Come on, come on. So... Storytelling. You guys are storytellers. Correct? We try. Okay. I can do my best. Okay. Well, in France, we are storytellers. So oh. I'm going. Je vais les avoir faire une histoire. I'm, I'm going to have you do a story. Okay? Oh. Okay. Okay. Je pense Dignitas, a team. Was there a team? Dignitas? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Joshi, tell me the story. Oh, okay, are you ready? Tell oh, me okay, the okay. story. I thought I was doing okay, that one. Okay, okay. All right. Well, get wrecked, Magical. I'm going to get to tell this. And I told Magical I was going to do this entirely in haikus today. So, let's see what we can do. XU in stream gets caught. He tries to run away, but not. Okay, okay. And... Ripple. Yes. Kills XU. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's magnifique. Count. Okay, okay, okay. This I one. The okay. The jungle is scary. Ah, oui. C'est vraiment... Uh, Rose peur. Thorn is always lurking. Okay, okay. Uh, XU... Feeling lost. Whoa. There we go. That's five. Bien, five, seven, five. Good mood. Good vibes. Okay, how good they mood. say. Good vibes. Good um, vibes. Enchanters are eh. CLG. <laughs> CLG catches the digs. There is no hope left. <laughs> <laughs> It was a little morbid, um, but, <laughs> <laughs> but beautiful in its own right. Oh, thank you, Josie. Oh, thank you. Thank you. you. Uh, we come back to, to France here. Uh, <laughs> magical. Yeah. Bring us up a little bit. It's the end of the day. Come on. Let's, let's hear the story of uh, well, CLG. CLG, C CLG. Okay, here, here we go. Here we go. Here okay. we go. All right. So I didn't have popcorn to eat during yours, uh, Josh, but I ate some okay. chips to kind of celebrate. So here, you see, here comes the prismal doot and doo doo. He's in the bot lane. <laughs> <laughs> and he, honestly, I just see prismal here, and I'm like, yeah, you know what? He, he's shining like a star in the sky that's so bright that it is also really hot, and it, nothing okay. could really touch him. They couldn't really get them, because how can you with this composition? Unless you have Ivern, they can get kite back so easily by CLG. So Prismal's like, I have a free lane. And he turned it around too. Mm -hmm. Exactly, it's free. And then here, you can see, completely free. Who can touch him? Who's ever seen a Jin curtain call where everyone's like, ah, yeah, <laughs> that guy over there. Let's just ignore him. Let's ignore him. That's exactly what happened here. He is mm. the king. He is untouchable. He is on Ooh. his high throne. And nothing can do anything to him. Un roi? Tu dis un roi? A king? Okay, that was not the, that's not king the player. Well, yes, it's not king the player, but he is the <laughs> king. I know in France you're not the necessarily king, king. like king, Le but roi. it's okay. <laughs> but here, you see, again, because he's untouched, he didn't really get many kills in this game, but he's still able to get a killing spree because nobody can do a damn thing about him. And he is just like, I... I have never played such a free game of League of Legends in my life. C'est comme mon, mon, un de mes, mes films favoris. Les Intouchables. The Untouchables. Uh, <laughs> merci, mes amis. The story Morbid for Joey, Joshi. Uh, 
but magical. <laughs> good job. Good. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, mes amis, c'est fini. Not all stories fini. have a happy ending. Aller, uh, <laughs> I have to go uh, somewhere. I don't know. Eat. <laughs> do something. Uh, not, I can't not be yet. here anymore. It's night time. You see, it's sleepy time. Okay. Good. I, I'm good. Sleepy Goodbye. Time. Au revoir, mes amis. Uh, Omelette de oh. fromage. Oh, yeah, yeah. me. Yeah, all right. It's always good having our Frenchmen here. Yeah, your more your story was a bit morbid. I will say. It. I mean, yeah, the game was. was a little morbid, right? For Dignitas, there was not, there was not a lot of they like Eclipse got a solo kill one v one, and then the rest of the game happened. Well, I, <laughs> that was kind of the high point think, for Dignitas in a lot of ways, right? Was Eclipse winning going one for one? Yeah, and I think you even talked about it really well. The fact that. That game, I and I've all, oh, I will always say this with Big Tusk. They are the ultimate coin flip theme, and there they flipped the coin of hey, we're gonna invade red, but Rosethorn answered them, taking away the red at the same time. Yeah. So when we have XQ ghosting up there to see, see if he can match the tempo and outpace where Rosethorn would be, he had read the play wrong. He didn't get to get anything on that top half. It had already been completely cleared by Rosethorn. Yeah, and we saw that it ended up putting XU in a really a desperate spot. And I know, you know, I've played a fair amount of competitive fives, not at this level, admittedly, with players like Mark, right? Rafa, who is not on the streams today. But uh, you know that there's a certain mindset that players will get into where they feel desperate. They feel like, I have to make a play. I have to do something to recoup our losses. I have to get us into a position where we are ahead because we are the beatdown. And once you start getting into that mindset, you start making worse and worse plays in order to try and find your way back in and X you. Unfortunately, no, but I, I, I want to hear from our hosts as well. We've been breaking down that game a lot, but it's always good to have new voices. So, Lennon. Hi. Hello. Out of oh. nowhere. Just... Was I was yeah. just passing by. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, what what an incredible, <laughs> incredible game number one. And I got to say, we've seen a lot of very one-sided first games in the series. And I, I find that interesting. Maybe something we can come back to at a later conversation. But here, it was almost absolute, right? It, it was really scary for Dignitas to play out that game past 10 minutes or so. Yeah. Yeah. And it was a stranglehold, right? Oftentimes, these... You know, first games when they're one sided, it's because the other team just blows mm -hmm. the other out. They go for like three fights back to back and they just happen to win all of them. But that's not what happened this game. It was just once we saw uh, Dignitas starting to fall behind, CLG never let them come back. It was constantly taking away the jungle from XU. It was constantly being in the sidelines to make sure and that going Dignitas couldn't defend series, everything. I had even said that I expect both games to be quick, not because I expected one team to dominate. I actually went into it thinking it was going to be 1 1 for both teams. Mm -hmm. But I knew both with games. their streak, one okay. one. <laughs> well, and it's the sh one, it's the streak, but two, it's the fact that that's how Dignitas plays. Yeah. They play for these early plays that will either net them the complete game where they could just steamroll from there, or it will be the exact opposite where a team like CLG can punish them. And this time, it wasn't even from any fights; it was just intelligent pathing out of Rosethorn. And that's what you expect from the top team yeah. in the academy, right? But that's also where the question begs itself. I, I'm excited to see what could possibly come out from Dignitas in game number two, right? Like, we've seen this team turn around so many series. We've seen this team excel in the way they like to play the game, and it's just didn't work. As you said, it's like very snowball-style st uh, snowball play where you just try and get an early lead. You try yeah. and get that going. If it doesn't work out, well, there's next game. <laughs> and then next game, hopefully it works. Yeah. And Dignitas, we have to know that their past four series against Evil Geniuses, TSM, Immortals, and Team Liquid, every single one of yep. those was a 1-1 draw. And so even now, as we look towards the top of the standings, where Dignitas, they have won two, two series and lost one, are still in a very good spot. There's a reason why <laughs> we're talking about this as them trying to contest CLG for yep, that top spot. Uh, it's an incredible thing to be able to come back from a, a game one like that, especially if you coming into game two, hopefully, right? Like... And that shows a lot of mental that I find so important in Academy because when you look at these players, right, they, they have grueling schedules. They have a lot of things to go through. And it's hard to come through with these stage games uh, coming out that way. But that mental is what is so important to me, especially when moving to the next level, right? Yeah. And this is why going into this next game, we're going to see a swap of sides. Dignitas will be on the blue side, CLG onto the red. But I'm curious to see how this will open up things for Dignitas. Unfortunately, yeah. right now with red side, you have two bans you have to take. <laughs> Both Caitlyn and Zeri. If you don't ban those two champions, 
and you, sure, you could try to go for a handshake where one of them, one team will get one, but the other team will get the other. But Zeri is so powerful, you can't really even do that. Caitlyn might be good, but she's not very good at the moment. Yeah. And I think we'll continue to see that taken away. Uh, but obviously, the fallback yeah. now seemingly is is back to that Aphelios, which I feel like was the more popular of the of the group, at least him uh, him and Jinx, right, early in the mm -hmm. season. But obviously, that's now the fallback because he's just so consistent across the board. I'm very excited to see what this, uh, this next game is going to unfold for us. We have our final game coming up, and Champ Select is just about ready. So, guys, take it away. Thank you, Mazel. We'll see you after Boy, this boy. game. But we got to get ready. It is our final game of the day for day two, week four, Super Week. We got more games tomorrow, by the way, and more games on the Academy channel. There's a lot going on. Lots of action. Will be a lot of fun. But this series, Dignitas need to win this game if they want to make sure they're remaining just two games out of first. DLG are a dominant team, yeah. and they are continuing to show why they are at the top of the table above the blob. Yeah, and with Dignitas going up on the blue side of the map this time, it is going to be changing things a fair amount in terms of how the draft is going to be going because Dignitas are now the ones with the extra bans because CLG are going to be the ones who are expected to ban the Caitlyn Zeri unless they don't think that Dignitas can play them. And that's a big question, right? You don't necessarily want to ban them if you think your opponents can't play them, but you can. It's it's like the constant game of chicken as to who's actually going to leave them up. But CLG not going to blink this time in Dignitas are going to be going right on back. The Aphelios, the Jinx, the option is there yes. for Dick and as to which one they want to grab, and the answer is Expected. the Jinx. No one going to easily be able Powered. to grab that. Aphelios should be on the other side. A lot of these are expected picks when not banned. Yeah. Is is the shirt that you're wearing underneath yeah, your sweater, Camo? Oh, well, yeah, it's I like a crane. It's like a little wave, you know, pond kind of thing. Gotcha, gotcha. It's like right at your neck. I was kind of curious. I was like, why is it not going to green screen? Well, that's why. Right? It's not, it's, oh! <laughs> that's a big reason okay. why. The Varus for Prismal and the Jarvan for Rosethorn. Okay. I like what I'm seeing. We already got a ton of primary engage. You know where your fights are going to be coming from automatically from CLG. And the number of times that Rosethorn is able to have an insane early game pathing on these kind of early game junglers really has set him apart from everybody else in Academy because he's the only one who's able to create that well, much early game pressure. Also, the thing pressure. with Varus, too, is the fact that you have the go button on your ADC. Prisma, we already know as being a shot caller, yeah. being a leader, having him in this control with Chain of Corruptions, I can say, all right, we've got them locked down, it's go time, is exactly what you want to see for CLG. Yeah. And one of the things that we also have to take a look at is, you know, everybody knows that there are reset champions like Jinx and uh, Viego and Samira that all do similar things. Varus mm -hmm. is a little bit of a reset champion too. Like once you get that first kill in a team fight, suddenly you get a ton of extra attack speed and it makes the rest of your fight even more powerful. And so there's a very obvious front line that CLG are drafting. And Dignitas, it kind of feels like they're playing right into it because you have the Braum wall you can put up, you have the Cataclysm wall that you can put up, and CLG are going to be creating a lot of safety. And for the there's in that game. ban. Finally, Triple in our 2022 season will not be playing the reworked Ari. Yeah, yeah. Has to go to something else, but Triple's got a very large champion pool. It's not like he's incapable of playing many different styles. We've just only been seeing that thus far since he's come back over to NA. With the Silas as another ban from CLG, I, that's usually, as I talked about before, what you are trying to set up if you want to be able to grab Ari for yourself. Mm. We'll see what they end up going for at this point, because Triple, as you've said, we haven't seen anything else from him just quite yet. So both sides are going to be learning. Now, if you watch a lot of Champions Q, and you will see a little bit of Triple popping up from time to time. So you will get to see some of the things that he's going to be bringing out. The Vladimir nah, would be Victor. surprising me yeah. if it came out this early. But yeah, the Victor makes a lot more sense. It's something that is still very standard. And despite the fact that Corky got nerfed, Victor just yeah, as good as it, he was on the previous patch. We just don't see the Corky Victor matchup anymore, right? It, Corky can still be, be picked. He just doesn't have that power at eight minutes anymore to be able to contest around those Rift Heralds. Victor, pretty much left alone. Still very strong. Still can yeah. have great dueling potential in le the level one. And then later on into the game, the amount of damage he provides in late game team fights. All a lot of useful tools for the side of CLG. 
Dignitas going to be going back for an Enchanter mid lane here? Like, it's set up pretty darn well at this point, right? You have both Xin Zhao and Graves and Jinx to power up during all of this. The one thing they're missing is, you know, an obvious source of magic damage. But without a true frontline coming in from CLG, because uh, Rose Thorn probably going with, like, a Gore Drinker style build, uh, you do need a diverse style of damage. But with the LeBlanc coming through, we saw Spyrax having a bit of a difficult time Ooh. on that earlier. But now, Dark and the Renekton final pick. We had the Church of LS in game one for Dignitas, and now we have a center champ in the top lane for game two out of CLG. This is an interesting change in styles for both teams. I got news for you, Magical, as well. Uh, Mark has already lost I already the bet. Saw. I saw. We will, in yeah, we will, in fact, be seeing a Rafa Renekton cosplay or in our yeah. near future. Or Rek'Sai. True, true. He can do the. What in the world was all that? All the clicking noises. Have you that not? Was it's a the terrible Rek'Sai noise. Clicking though. I'm just saying. What terrible at clicking or just like horrifying? But, I've heard both. Those is what I have to say for that one. But let's get back <laughs> on topic. Let's talk about the games that we see. Dignitas' draft feels far more in their wheelhouse. What we've been seeing from their strength out of them for Academy, right? Last draft we kind of criticized saying that Ivern wasn't really a Darkwing style champion. Not that it couldn't succeed, but just that's not the style we're used to at a Dignitas Quantum Pay Academy. We like this more, the more aggressive style they can play into that of CLG, but CLG also have very strong lanes at the same time. And that's going to be really crucial for the members of Dignitas right now, because if they are able to play a little bit more aggressive early on in the game, it will allow them to actually have some way to play against this roster. Just because Varus is being played and we liked it because it has some of the crowd control, there's a reason it's not as popular these days. A lot of its items got nerfed. The Immortal Shield Bow is not as strong as it used to be. The uh, Wit's End that it used to build second, not as strong as it used to be because it also got some damage nerves and less magic resistance so Dignitas is going to have a little bit more freedom to play around because uh this champion isn't as strong as something like the Aphelios but Prismal and it is a Prismal style champion we've seen out of him many times through different metas as well a lot of comfort in that champion but we've loaded up onto the rift it is our final game here for day two of week four DLG have the advantage 1-0 in the best of two they can get a 2-0. They will remain firmly in control of first place. CLG. I mean, they look poised to do it. Rose Thorn again poking around. Very standard stuff coming out from the Jarvan. Just seeing if he can find any early information. But CLG also have a couple of stuns to go for. Who do they give this experience to? It looks like they're going to be giving it to Triple for sure. I think Dokla's too far away. To participate in that but if they end up giving the experience to three people it doesn't do them any good if they divide it amongst two it's potentially a level two lead off of just the first wave and now ooh, really close almost getting another ward for triple which definitely yeah, would've, would've, level that would have put this victor firmly in control of the lane phase against dark wings this still gives a little bit of wiggle room for leblanc one thing i want to see and we haven't seen it too much here in academy but I feel like Triple is one of those players who won't let me down. The level one for Victor is incredibly powerful and a good tool to gain control immediately. So we'll see what Triple ends up doing, but at the same time, with the jungle start in the top side, they absolutely know that Dokla was going for a leash. There's no reason that he would have built up Rage otherwise, so Dignitas know exactly where Rose Thorn started. They just might not know where he's going to be going afterwards. And as both the junglers starting on their red, they're going to be doing a opposite side start, and it means that they will not be able to participate in the plays that the other one goes for. So we could see a very imbalanced start if any of these Looking games work Looking at the out. lanes that the the closest to this bot lane. One good thing that we didn't really get to touch on is looking at Farsh with lethal tempo and a Braum. You can easily stack up those concussive blows uh, stacks really quickly that will allow Rose Thorn to immediately land a flag on drag onto any target that gets stunned. Yeah, and without Aftershock on the Leona, much squishier 
Yokla going a little bit aggressive, but he doesn't necessarily know exactly where XU is. I, I think the big thing here is that JJ suddenly a huge target in these ganks just because he doesn't have well, any way to reduce damage against What we yet. talked about. Look at you that. You got the lethal tempo. You can I know lethal tempo. The hail of blades where you can immediately afterwards go boop boop boop. Get that pew, you got the flow stack up immediately. Yeah, great, great damage, and the Glacial Augment does not prevent damage to you. It only prevents damage to your allies. But Rose Thorn, we were talking about how much he typically goes for early game plays. Uh, this time, not going for that same kind of early game aggression on the bottom side. Instead, just full clearing his jungle uh, and going back towards the Krogs on the top side. And XU getting some kind of read on that, not necessarily knowing exactly where Rose Thorn is. I think they expect that Rose Thorn's on the bottom side of the Ooh, map, and they're no, trying to now that take the him out. The Scuttle Crab isn't taken, they know he's not there. Look at how XU is pathing. He's looking to see if he can find the CLG members caught in the river. Yeah, Eclipse can stop Dokla whenever he wants, so I'm surprised Dokla is He's doing baiting. this. It yeah. looks like a bit of a bait. He needs to get up and look a with bit more no mana on Eclipse. He had to flash, but they're going to be able to get the sun from Dokla. Flag and drag, knock up as well. Easy nice. first blood for Dokla. Yeah, that felt a bit telegraphed coming through, but that's what we said. Dignitas thought that Rosemar was going to be on the bottom side, and now they're chasing Breezy and Prismal away. And Reason Prismal going to be kind of zoned off. It's going to mean that they're going to be losing a couple of minions and a little bit of experience. But again, Rose Thor, master of the early game pathing, throws a switcheroo and gets Dignitas uh, first blood they going over CLG. That dive. It was so simple with how they set it up. Dokla baiting in Eclipse. No mana on the Graves either. He can continue to play this aggressively into, the, into this Graves now. He's got himself <laughs> the Iron Spike Whip. He's just Second got so two? much more damage than Eclipse can really deal with. Yeah, with the flash blown, Dokla can much more easily stick to this guy, and we're seeing how aggressive Dokla can be. He's one of the players that a lot of people had almost written off, right? Everybody knew, it was like, yeah, we've all seen Dokla, we know how good he is, but he's been stepping up a lot this year and been looking really good. We typically look at players like Darshan and Viper as the best laners, but Dokla kind of I, I haven't them really seen a laning phase from Dokla where he hasn't just won, <laughs> where he hasn't been this absolute terror in the top lane. Now, Dignitas trying to upset that a little bit, but Eclipse could potentially go down if they don't play this intelligently. Yeah, especially with how low he is, not much mana, and the rage bar of Dokla. He's about to be level 6 too. That's going to be difficult to dive. This Renekton, that's why they have to flash now. Make sure the slice and dice isn't going to come through, but with the ignite ticking, it's not enough damage from the members of Dignitas. Rose Thorn had all, all ample here. opportunity to be able to go wrap home. around for this play. Flag and Drag interrupts XU, but he was able to get away from the turret aggro, but with Breezy right behind them, all they have to do is Rock get the witch fight to connect, and then they can lock him forever. Goes wide, XU flashing over the wall to survive. Okay, and Dokla absolutely A-OK, -okay. doesn't even have the flash, doesn't need it. CLG turning the favorite back around, and Dignitas absolutely on the back foot. Darkwing's teleports right, in here, more, though. But Dokla using the dominance, getting a lot of damage coming in. Why did you go He's in, JJ? Hey, not JJ, XU, that wasn't necessarily what he wanted to do. XU trying to make these early game plays. He's in the same spot that we were talking about with Mark. He feels desperate to make plays, but they are so under leveled at this point. Level six Dokla just eats XU that's, alive. That's what we're talking about. Why it's so difficult to actually die for Renekton. Once he hits level six, he's just going to pump dominance. He's going to turn the fight back on you. Okay, Dokla. I mean, JJ is here, but not really able to walk up. JJ, one of the captains of the team, and now yeah, two but level Rose difference. does have to contend with Eclipse and JJ. Darkwing is looking for that play as well. If he can pick off this jungler, that is a big play, but he flashed over the wall. Breezy nearby. It's jumped on by XU. Still, level discrepancies for the Dignitas members. Your jungler is le lower level than the support of CLG. Ooh, wow. The rocket goes out and hits Rose Thorn, but not going to take him down. Look at the CS difference that's coming out for Rose Thorn again. <laughs> 17, that is four camps and change. Already a lead coming out for Rose Thorn. His early game pathing really throwing Dignitas for a loop and a desperation that is already creeping in to the plays that we're seeing from Dignitas needs to be put a stop to. We need to get JJ to pull them back. Mama Bear needs to let everybody know. The Cubs need to let them know that it is okay. They can still come back. They have a LeBlanc. They have a Graves. They have Jinx. They have late game win conditions. They can't keep giving over more advantages when to CLG. we turn our attention for Dignitas, we look at this bot lane. Spawn 
Doing a good job of keeping a lead over Prismal. He's going for more of that lethality build. Probably, I'm curious to see if it's going to be something like a Dusk Blade or even an Eclipse, just to get a little bit more damage in this fight. But it still gives time to spawn. Keep farming up, try to scale up a little bit more into this game and be the threat for the team. Yeah. I mean, it just feels like a couple of VECs right now, right? Very efficient components coming out Josh, for Prismal. It's not going to catch sure up. What? I am going to keep using Stop it. Stop trying to make fetch a thing. It's my fetch. <laughs> a good flash away from Prismal. <laughs> away from JJ. But now flash off of Prismal means he is a target. Yeah. But XU going to be backing away. Dokla, I mean, he's not a mana champion, so he can just kind of harass Eclipse over and over. And there's the dance, right? Is Dokla going to go back in? Is he going to go for a fight? The question is always there. And Eclipse needs to be willing to back away immediately. So good dance coming out from Dokla. And now CLG, unclear what it is that they're trying to do because the flag and drag was just used from Rose. Oh, Dark now, Wings oh, distortioned Dark Wings. in. He's a free target if they want to jump on them. But like you said, flag and drag, they had to wait for the cooldown. Cataclysm gets the flash oh. out of Dark Wings. And that makes him a very easy target coming up. Whenever Darkwings goes for a distortion to do damage to triple or clear the wave, he has to think, is Rose Thorn here? Am I safe to actually do this? Because next time, the answer might be no. Rose Thorn, instead, just with mm -hmm. so many friends up here in the top side, we've been noticing that both Breezy and JJ are spending almost no time in the bottom lane, meaning that they are very low on experience. JJ only level 4 still, where Breezy at least level 5. But the bottom lane has been pretty even between Spawn and Prismal. Between the two of them, not necessarily a huge advantage coming out. Just about two waves in favor of Spawn. Be partly because of the fact that actually tried to make the one play down here in the but bottom these side. Experiences, the experienced leads are going to start biting Dignitas in the butt if they don't actually have a play workout soon. You can see JJ X flashing over the wall. Mm -hmm. Prismal's still here. Using a yes, nice fled. cleanse to get away, but it's still the Zenith play to follow up. Unfortunately, no level six out of JJ. A lot of damage though from spawn. Make sure it doesn't even matter. There you go. Mama Bear is here giving over the treat to spawn here. The first kill for Dignitas in this game, and it will put Prismal behind at this point. But there's still lots of opportunities. The rest of his map is doing very well, and Rose Storm continuing to out farm XU. As we, interestingly enough, uh, Alex, we are not seeing a whole lot of opportunities or a whole lot of priority being placed on these dragons. Even though the cloud isn't the most exciting thing, it is still the first Gosh, on your road to four. Mark. No. I, yes, I know. I maybe. heard it. <laughs> I don't know why. It it, is. That's twice in two days. I, I don't think but I've again, ever done that before. It has been a bit since we cast together. I think the last time was week two. So yeah. we... Yeah, it's, it's been, a, oh, it's yeah, been yeah. a couple weeks. I'll, I'll forgive you this time, but tomorrow, I swear to God. Well, you know, we're not casting tomorrow. This that's time. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'll so forgive you, you tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. I'll that, take that's it. how we'll do it. But right here, okay. Rose Thorn's set up All right. for this dive on Eclipse. No mana, really. Probably enough to be able to get an end of the line Cloud World damage. That's about it. Yeah, I mean, he already used the ult to get the wave cleared out, but in the mid lane, Dark Wings is getting pressured by Breezy. It's oh, going to be at least gone. one it's gone. turret played, and. Yeah, yeah Dark Wings, he gone. had passed as though he wanted to fight around the dragon that you were talking about, the lack of priority from both teams, yep. but got caught with the fact that the Rift Herald was there for Rose Thorn, who had already been posturing topside. They should have read that they could easily fall down Rose Thorn for this mid lane turret and take it for extra gold for uh, triple. Yeah, it's just a lot of money. Two and a half thousand gold with only two to one kills at this point. And look at the fact that CLG instantly, just as you were talking about previously with Rose Thorn going from one lane to another in order to get a play going, they're doing the exact same thing here where CLG not giving any oh, opportunity for Dignitas to Flash away, but the follow-up flag and drag on the three members. And it is a chaos storm of Peru. And then this top Holy. lane, two are already dead on Dignitas. CLG. We talked about how last game looked clinical. That dive just proves it further. I almost swore on camera. That's how that's how crazy that fight was. <laughs> just watching CLG clinically once again take that fight and prevent any opportunity for counterplay means that Dignitas is struggling so hard. You Triple doesn't want to take this, wings. but Dokla is in a 1v2. fight against Dokla at this point. He's got Gore Trigger, another flag and drag with the gravity field. Triple. They might have lost triple. Oh, JJ will survive. That is a big loss for CLG with the dive not going out well. The bot lane, we got the chain of corruption coming as well. 
These fights just continue all across the map. They got got some flows. The flash coming in from Prismal, taking his own retributive kill with a lot of damage coming in. But they gotta be careful. It's oh spawn. My God. He's excited. He's stunned up though. Can he heal? The minions oh. double kill for his spawn. Barely winning again. There's two times where Dignitas getting away with murder in these last couple of plays means that suddenly they are in a spot where even though the gold lead hasn't changed at all, the mental change that has gone through this team has to be immense. Suddenly they're saying, yes, yeah, CLG is mortal. We can take them down. We can play against these guys. And now that they have spawn with three kills, he's up 1,200 gold up against Prismal. And that is basically a BF sword. That is the first step in order to try and actually win some of these upcoming team fights because now Joshi, you know who this to play is callback to. time. I talked about how Spawn is an underrated player on the side of Dignitas. Everyone always focuses on XU. He's this flashy player. JJ helps to facilitate him. But Spawn has been one of these players that I say uh, behind the scenes, in the shadows, has been a lurking. You can see the power this player has. That was an incredible turnaround. The fact that he lived on a sliver of health and still then gets a double kill. Yeah, absolutely crazy. The reset coming through, getting super excited. Now, as he's got the Kraken Slayer, is going to be in a spot where he can be very, very aggressive during some of these fights because there are so many other people that CLG still need to pay attention to, even though they're not necessarily getting their own leads. The fact that Grace is on a full <laughs> item, the fact that... Oh, oh that's just God. disrespectful, Rose Thorn. Plus 69. Disrespectful. Nice. Just comes up, lances the chickens, and like, thanks for the kebabs. Thanks. <laughs> okay, well, does XG try and go for something here? No, he is already pieced out. Wants to have nothing to do with this. Darkwing might try and go for a steal, but it's really uh, hard to smite, smite. I don't yep. think he would want to. He's still not on his mythic item just yet. That is the one thing, even with this bot lane working out well. You have a cheaper mythic on the side of Prismal, and then all the other side. The top side of this map is looking Whoa. a lot stronger for CLG. You can tell by the fact that Rose Thorn is able to essentially solo out Darkwings. Uh -huh. Prismal, where'd you come from? The mid lane, apparently, that's just going to be a free kill given over to the captain here for CLG. And CLG, they just need to make sure they don't give anything back. Triple end up giving a kill on the top side. Don't want to have that happen again. But Dokla. Look at this, no, he does not care. but there is a mortal shield bow picked up by Eclipse. He'll be a little bit safer when Dokla goes for these all-ins. Even though Dokla is able to get a bit of damage back onto him, not going to be likely that he can solo kill him for some time. Yeah, and because they are committing so many people down here to the bottom side of the map, it's going to be another bag secured for CLG. It's constantly getting so much pressure on the map. Triple, again, out farming his opponent. I'm curious how many stacks he has. So he already has the E evolved. It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't have the Q evolved and he's only about a third of the way there. So he's, because they're not necessarily getting that much fighting for Triple, he doesn't have that many extra stacks in order to get all of his evolutions complete. But as they start to get that coming through, you'll get more and more utility coming out of this character and Triple showing that he can play more than just an Ari. Well, like pretty good in this before, victory He might have only played Ari so far, but we've seen him in Academy before. So far. He's played many different champions over his career here in Academy in NA. I'm not too surprised to see him have proficiency on this victor. And with the fact that he is in a, a good, comfortable spot, not exactly a massive lead over the door. No way. No oh. way. No! Okay. I know. I, that's why I was waiting. I didn't think it was going to happen. If it, was, if it did, I would have reacted, but... Going back to what I was talking about, Triple here is sitting pretty comfortably. Got a kill for himself, assist, a little bit of a lead over Dark Wings. And you talked about it before. When you play a LeBlanc and you fall behind, it doesn't feel very good because what can you really do to impact no. these fights? Wait. Uh, you just got to wait out the crowd control, right? You got to make sure there's nothing left to hit you back. And it means that LeBlanc can no longer be a super practical tool and becomes a reactive one until you have about three or four items and you can start to threaten people once again. But because they are under leveled, because they are about the same level as Prismal, the amount of pressure that they put on to the map is so much lower. Notice the fact that JJ, level six, he is down six levels on the solo laners of CLG. Ouch. That just, that, and the thing that yeah. sucks for that is JJ is trying to make these plays elsewhere. That's why he's so far behind. Even if he's 1-0-1, yeah. looks pretty decent. The spot and time spent outside of these lanes has been so much that Breezy, who's also spent a lot of time out of lane, is still two levels above 
JJ and had died. <laughs> I mean, technically, infinitesimally more than JJ. But one more time of death should net more of a lead for JJ than it does for Breezy. Exactly. Yeah, and the levels, we bring them up because each level, on average, for an average champion, is worth about a thousand gold, right? It's a lot of money that is being missed out on because of all the levels that CLG has. So we see that they are up about 6,000 gold just in terms of like the raw amount of money they have. And if you take stock of everything across the board, uh, they are up a level top lane, the same in jungle, a level mid lane, down two in the bottom lane, but two levels are now just one level coming out for Breezy means that they are still actually ahead like even more than just the gold that they were able to pick up. And as this goes down, the local gold going over to Victor and the Jarvan is going to continue accelerating triple in this game. He's already got a shadow flame almost completed. Right here, the charge. Oh, XU barely gets the eye. So not a completed Correct. charge. Won't get it below a threshold. Like, I kind of want to go back to that experience that you're talking about. That could be the saving grace for Dignitas, where they have mm -hmm. an experience lead. Mm -hmm. And it's on to spawn. As long as they can keep spawn fed and nice and beautiful and juicy, okay. that's going to be all that matters. But Rosalind tried to go into the back line, had to flash away because spawn just has too much damage. They got the kill onto one, but it's going to be trade of support for support <laughs> with the kill onto LeBlanc too. But look at spawn on touch, getting the damage onto Dokla. They can chase this back. He's nearly down, but he still survives. And somehow, Prisma was able to get eclipsed all the while. Knocker coming in from XU, but they're just kiting this back. Spawn wants to be able to do what he can for the team with the zap coming in as well. He's getting some crits, oh. but still, CLG members are barely holding on to dear life. Finally, he's excited one to be able more. to dodge away from the flag and drag. And now crit that time on a Rose Thorn. Only going to be able to get the one kill on a Prismal. Man, Spawn is trying his hardest in every single one of these fights, but the expert disengages coming out from most of the members of CLG mean that it is still CLG favored, but Prismal is going to be dead a lot longer than Eclipse and Darkwings, and the difference in terms of when they actually spawn is huge because the teleport difference is available. This is an opportunity right now for Dignitas to try and make something happen, but they don't believe that the opportunity is there. They're not going to be going for it. The confidence looks shattered as we get the replay coming through and we get to see everybody just disengaging. Try again pick up second one of the game. We get to see what our rift is. It's the Hexgate Rift and I have some opinions Woo. on this Hex Rift. My opinion is no one is yeah. legally allowed to take any Hex Gates if you're looking for a fight. Yeah. What? So if you say what a fight's about to break out and you want to take the Hex Flash to get a flank, no, yeah. don't do it. Because every Don't, single time not? I've watched it, every single time, the person who takes the hex uh, gate dies immediately. Every time. Mm, okay. It's okay. illegal. I was worried that you're gonna say that it's like cheating or something, but no, you, you just think that it, it, it's it's like, bad. That's fine. So, that's fine. Just we'll you know, see. moving what? moving around the map because you're not like actually going for a fight. But the fact that he distortion forward is, is the it problem. Because now he just gets blown up by Rose Thorn. All right, never yeah, mind. I, I'm going back. I'm going back on fine. what I said. You're right. It's not fine. <laughs> it's more proof of why you don't take hex gates. Well, CLG now with Darkwing's dead is convinced that this is the opportunity they need to one pull Dignitas out and two if Dignitas don't come back, that CLG can just pick up this uh, Baron all by itself. Dokla dodging out from the Zenith Blade means that CLG very comfortable. No to hit way this. they can even answer this. Even if they throw out a Yolo rocket from spawn, the body blocks there for CLG meant. But they couldn't actually turn for it. Instead, they're going towards this bottom half of the map. There is uh, the objective bounties now that can be picked up by Dignitas. The fact that you have a 4-0 Jinx, despite what's happening on the other sides of the map, that is always going to be your fallback. Utilizing spawn, JJ. even with JJ going in, they have spawn in this position where you can look for the rocket, but unfortunately it was a little bit of a disenergy there because they knocked Breezy away. He finally dies to Darkwings, who was able to join the oh. fight, and here's spawn. He's getting a little bit of damage. Try to see if he can get the crit onto Rose Thorn, but he just couldn't follow up with the zap. Okay, yeah, Breezy goes down in exchange for Darkwings. It is a one-for-one, one, but spawn got the... First uh, part of the excitement, but look at the fact that they are just losing out on the rest of the map. CLG, even after trading evenly, are in a position to take even more objectives. Prismal comes down, flag is thrown out, so that everybody gets extra attack speed. They take the top side jungle, they take the top lane turret, and CLG just find win after win and after with win. With the recalls now, we can see exactly what they're building. A Blade of the Rune King for Dokla. He is truly on this split push, diving the back line and assassinating someone like Spawn Duty. Yeah, he's going to start ruining everybody. 
uh, Dokla is just so strong. The Renekton is here. It might be a center champ, but in this game, it's way more than that. It's totally controlling the Rift. It is having so much of an impact every single time it has been able to join. That's because you're able to point and click on a single person and stun them, right? You have so much control over every single one of these fights. And we see when you're 3,000 gold up on your lane opponent and just have an extra item, it means that Eclipse is basically no, irrelevant to this game. CLG, they're not even, they're not sinning. They're yep. just atheists. They beat the Ivern last game. They mm. have the Renekton in this game. They're completely antithetical to what the church stands for. Oh, what is a god exactly. to a non-believer? All right, well, we'll see if uh, if their dogma is going to be enough as Triple continues to push in. Dokla has control of the bottom side and their teleport is available on the crocodile. So they could look for a potential dive, but they only have 45 seconds left for this Baron. And so the pr uh, pressure that CLG is creating means that they will have waves crashing on all three lanes at the same time. The only place that they could potentially be attacked is Prismal, who's all on his own. At the zone. moment, they can't even get near Prismal. He was able to escort the minions in to the inhibitor turret. You can see that Darkwings was trying oh. to get on top of Prismal, but with a flash away, he is perfectly safe so they can return to the duty of continuing to harass these inhibitor turrets. But as everybody goes down to try and deal with Prismal, look at the fact that they are still going to get pressure everywhere else on the map. They still have 10 seconds. So even though they aren't getting any of these inhibitor turrets down just quite yet, the amount of pressure they create, the amount of damage they are doing will be sticking around. With 40 seconds left before the next dragon, CLG have time to back away if they want to just continue stacking up the dragon and get the Hextech dragon, which is super, super impactful when you are just looking to get that slow. Well, say, even just the Hextech started. dragon for someone like Prismal, the attack speed, the ability haste is going to be big, but if they can get this pick on the Dokla, it will make it a little bit less likely. But look at Dokla. how tanky he is, how difficult it is to kill him immediately. But nobody could show up from the side of CLG to save his life. Spawn, though, another assist going towards him will have even more power to play with as this next dragon is going to be spawning and it means that Dignitas have an extra member but down 10,000 gold. CLG is still in a dominant position. The death dance done onto Rose Thorn means he's super difficult to take down just because he takes 30% reduced damage on both AD and, and AP. And Dopa has one as well. Once he spawns back up he can TP in and we already said how difficult it was to kill the croc last time, just in that previous pick. Could be even worse in the future, but they can fight before okay. he's able to spawn. Darkwing's into the back line. The Look point. for Prismal, but he's got a fat shield to keep it alive. Gravity well, body block two coming in on the rocket for Rosethorn. That will be the dragon for Dignitas. Okay, Dignitas able to take a fight, and Triple not committing the Chaos Storm does mean that there is a objective bounty going over to Dignitas. So good usage of the overman situation where they have an extra player on the map. And now CLG, their onslaught has been stifled a little bit, but the question that we have is, can Dignitas continue to do that? The desperation is always there. They need to find any mistake that CLG is going to be making to punish them if they want to I bring it back to a 1-1. I want to see the gold differences between the players. Because even though there is just shy of that 9,000 gold, uh, no, just shy of the 10,000 gold lead, sorry, for uh, CLG, I want to see how much gold Spawn has compared to that of Prismal. Even though Prismal has three completed items compared to Spawn, Look at that. Infinity Edge just got finished as I was talking for spawn. That is going to be the one that is critical to the success of Dignitas. Yeah, it's a lot of damage that spawn will be able to put out. And so CLG don't have a super easy way to try and control him unless spawn is too far forward. Jarvan has to kind of solo dive on his own. And Dokla can try and keep up, but Jarvan dives a lot deeper than spawn can during a lot of these fights. So CLG, now they come on back. There's 30 seconds before the Baron spawns, and it looks like a very similar setup to what we just saw. And with not a lot of vision coming out from the members of Dignitas, it could be very difficult for Dignitas to leave their base to try and contest any objectives. I don't think they even want to. I think they are more than content with just continuing to scale, getting these items. It is difficult because obviously CLG are also going to be getting more items, getting stronger as the time progresses. But the fact that they are relying so much on this bottom half of the map, relying on spawn, is m what is going to save the day for them. That is why you were talking about it. Rose Thorn has to find a way to get on top of him. But the only way they're really going to be able to do that is if he's out of position. Yeah. 
Oh, Triple really needs this. He's really low on mana right now. Darkwings could try to take it, but here's the fight. The Triple, but the fight had to commence the entire time. That's a lot of damage, but they got the kill on the Darkwings before he can oh. snap back with this distortion. And JJ in the gravity well will die too to Prismal. Vaughn, the Chaos Storm is on top of him. He had to flash away because he could have died to that, but that means his team is completely left out to dry. The flash away from his with a follow up of Triple. Another gravity well with an arrow coming in. Look at Rosethorn too. He's got the Chaos, he's got a Cataclysm, and he's got a double kill for Prismal. <gasps> He still had the Cataclysm Magical. He still had the tools necessary. CLG Clinical waiting for the right moments to use all of their ultimates in these fights. And now five versus zero for another 10 seconds. I think that this was might be the end of the game. Ace from CLG. Vector able to kite that one back the entire time. JJ, the first to spawn, dives in onto Rosethorn, but he has to go golden and will die immediately when he snaps back out of stasis. Same with Darkwings. CLG, the top of the leaderboard, the top of Academy, take down the coin flip team without ever having to coin flip a single damn fight. They are that strong and they will remain our uncontested number one team. Oh, CLG. People weren't necessarily looking at this team to be at the top of the stands at the beginning of the season, but they maintain their streak of dominance with another 2-0 coming in. They had a 1-1 yesterday against Golden Guardians, but now they are in firm control of their own destiny for the rest of the season, and nobody seems to really be able to stop them. If they lost a single time, they lost to 100 Thieves, but that's really it. And the other one of the top teams that we saw even just last week, now is the, really the only team that's really been able to threaten these guys and CLG, I, I don't have more yeah, to say about them. They just amazing. look good. They've had uh, two one ones, one zero two. Everything else has been a two zero for them. Getting another two zero to the record has been incredible out of CLG. For now, we're going to toss it to a break. We're going to have an interview when we come out of that break. So make sure.